a special presentation of ABC Sports. Bob Huggins, Cincinnati Bearcats have a Conference USA regular season title as they have pounded opponents into submission with a dominating front line led by preseason All-American Danny Fortson. The Memphis Tigers will counter with their destructive inside force Sunday at Abayo. But the story today is Tigers coach Larry Finch as he plays the pyramid for the very last time. The curtain closes on Conference USA. Cincinnati Memphis next on ABC. Let's hoop it up! Jim Brinson, John Mendel on a very emotional day. Well, you know, a lot at stake here for Memphis today. One, it's senior day. Nobody likes to lose on senior day. Two, it's Larry Finch's last game. Three, this Memphis team has a chance to win the white division, a possible conference bye, and then a good look from the NCAA. All right, and of course, for head coach Larry Finch, this is a bittersweet curtain call. It's his last game as head coach of the Tigers at the Pyramid. After 11 seasons and 219 wins, Finch will take his teaching, motivation, and inspiration somewhere else. Payne Weber College Basketball will return with John Saunders in our New York studio right after this. Welcome back to Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Cincinnati and Memphis here at the Pyramid and just moments ago a special presentation to head coach Larry Finch who is coaching his last game as the Tigers head coach the winningest coach in Memphis basketball history an extremely emotional moment for Larry Finch and his family as his tenure will end at the conclusion of this college basketball season. And now we are back to our live picture as we check out the starting lineups beginning first for the Cincinnati Bearcats. And here they are, Patterson Forson, Juleson Davis, and Burton. Now the word on Damon Flint is, is that he is available to see some action. He is normally the starting point guard. Of course, Bob Huggins, the head coach for the Cincinnati Bearcats, and what a job he has done since coming to University of Cincinnati. And for Memphis, head coach Larry Finch is going to send out Adebayo, Henderson, Allen, Allen, and Garner. The five who have been starting most of the season for head coach Larry Finch in his 11th and final season as head coach of the Tigers. And of course, the big matchup under the basket today. Fortson and Adebayo. Adebayo playing very well his last three games, averaging almost 20 points a game and eight rebounds. Of course, Danny Fortson had 26 points and 11 rebounds, fresh off a of Mar Marquette victory on Thursday evening. So watch that matchup down low. A lot of banging, a lot of bruising. Series record between these two. Very interesting here that UC has won four of the last six in their last meeting. A Cincinnati victory by five. Keep in mind, Cincinnati won their last nine Conference USA games. Losing only to South Carolina the other weekend. And want to keep that on cruise going into the tournament. Watch the lob pass here. We know Memphis likes to get the tip and throw with the lob. They don't do it here. Well, Adebayo immediately operating down low on the block against Jackson Juleson. Lost the basketball, but Memphis controls, and quickly they drop down low again. Adebayo spin move off the window. It won't fall. Rebound battle for knocked out of bounds, and Memphis maintains possession. Well, I would say that Larry Finch got a lot of confidence in Sunday. Right down low to him immediately, twice in a row. 
Maybe they think they can take advantage of his quickness over Juliuson. Henderson, off balance, running one-hander, won't fall, rebound, controlled by the Bearcats, and quickly they go the other way. Bearcats will control a lot of rebounds. You see him step out of bounds. The Bearcats second in the nation in rebounding average at 40.4, having almost 10 more rebounds a game than their opponents. They will control the boards. Record here at the Pyramid, 9-4 home record this year, and that'll be a foul right there. Juleson complaining that Adebayo using his arms to wrap around him. It would be real interesting if you're watching on TV. Don't watch the ball. Watch those two down low. Referees say the foul occurred before the shot. Stolen off the inbounds play by Darnell Burton. And quickly now, Davis in the front court. What a job he has done stepping in the last few games for David Flint. Juleson way outside. You see them try to move Fortson now into the low block position. Memphis second in steals in the conference, so we'll have to watch those backcourt matchups. Memphis likes to make the steals, get some transition baskets like that. One won't fall, however. Cincinnati controls. Here's the outlet. Fortson gives it up on the wing. Oh, the great from pass. behind, and they whistle the foul. Well, you don't see Fortson give it up very often, John. Really showing his versatility there. Fortson, a big man. Of course, the pro scouts drooling over him. Rumors of him coming out his junior year this year. What a pass across there. And let's keep in mind, Fortson, 6'7", 260 pounds. There's the attempted block and the foul. And Patterson, his front court mate, will shoot two. He misses the first one. For Henderson, that is his first personal. Ruben Patterson has been spectacular in the last few games. Uh, 19 points in Thursday's win over Marquette, and he's averaged 18.7 over the last two. Well, if you talk to Bobby Huggins, he said this guy makes the the, the, the great moves in games. Uh, it is a sometimes wonder what happens to him once in a while. He'll fade away on him. Give it up to Harry Allen on the wing, and that's our first hoop of the afternoon. That's the way Memphis likes to get hoops. Either turnovers and steals down for the fast break or what we call there a secondary break where the big guys are just filling and they find the right hole and get the jumper. And you see the versatility of Patterson right there taking it off the dribble and then the little quick pivot move in the lane. Garner again, Allen on the perimeter. They give Garner the outside shot. Yeah, Davis backed off him, just daring him to shoot. And here comes Patterson on the run. Fortson sets up, but they can't get the ball to him, even though he's calling. Now he's got it in his favorite position. Stolen away from the blind side. Garner. Those steals we're talking about. Henderson maintained possession. They let it go from the outside. It's going to be way short that time, and finally bounced out of bounds. And Memphis maintains possession. Memphis likes to move the ball up the floor if they don't have the layup. You can't go to sleep on them because they're filling the lanes. Move the ball very nicely, looking for that transition shot. Lots of nervous energy early in this game. Oh, yeah, game. definitely. It's senior day. We had the ceremonies. Then, of course, Larry Finch, a, a guy who has coached most of these guys throughout their Memphis career. Uh, it's a tough day, and you got to really keep that under control, you know, as you go, go play the game. Chad Allen, lot pass down low, out of bio, had it stripped away, and out of bounds. Well, they're getting the ball down low to Adebayo. He's just not converting so far. You saw the switch. Juleson out. And Bobby Brandon in to guard him. Bobby just a little bit quicker. And on the slip by Harry Allen, the pass goes away. And there goes Fortson. The finish. There again, Fortson showing his adaptability. In on the board, sprinting out on the break, first man down the floor. Down to the 17-minute mark, first half of play. Brandon comes way outside as they trap Allen on the outside. That leaves Adebayo open, spin move, center of the lane, hesitation move, off balance, shot, and he banked it in as Brandon and Adebayo both hit the deck. Might have been an offensive foul there. It looked like Adebayo forced a lot of that contact, but... As a player, you got to adjust. There's a steal. Henderson's got it. He'll take it. A 
Well, John, they're getting what they wanted. They're two big scores to step up early, and that's out of Bio and Henderson. And another steal. And then stolen back and then lost out of bounds. It'll be Memphis basketball. Henderson much quicker than Patterson. Patterson really shouldn't bring in the ball up the floor. Here's the previous play where Henderson got the slam off the breakaway, and then Henderson made the steal off Patterson, and it's Memphis ball again. Cincinnati's turned it over four times within four minutes. Chad Allen thought about it, drives the basket, gets shut off, has it rejected by Fortson. He didn't get it off. No, he Jimmy. didn't. He didn't get it off. <laughs> Patterson the other way. And the finish. Well, we're talking about entertainment here, up and down the floor. Man, oh, man. They are just... They're set. getting after it. They are getting after it. Harry Allen shaking up at midcourt. Last steal. A lot of quickness in the big people out here. A lot of quickness in the forwards. There's Patterson on the steal, down for the layout. Perimeter now. This is Garner trying to get through in underneath. Lost it, got it back. It's still loose on the floor, being kicked around like a rugby scrum. Finally, Memphis controls. That one won't fall. Rebound. Brandon comes down with it for the Bearcats. Wow. We're playing today. Boy, they're letting them play, That's too. That's right. Call your own foul. This Sand is a man's game here. It's Sandlot's ball. <laughs> outside tougher rain that time. Burton a 40 percent yeah. Burton a 40 percent shooter out there. They have to come and play him, especially if he hits his first one like that one. They got to come play him now. Have to step up on that perimeter against Burton. Allen being defended by Burton frees himself, walks inside, and softly takes <laughs> it in. Well, he was free. Chad Allen set a huge pick on Burton. Interesting for Memphis, they are the all knee brace team. Adebayo and Allen. Sports it, trying to set up Allen on the outside. Here's what said, triple team him down low. Did he step on the end line? Yeah. He did. Break in the action, 14.42 to go. Louisville, 83 to 71. Right now, let's take it back out to Jim. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you, John. Uh, nine eight is our score. Cincinnati leading by a single point, and it has been a wild affair early in this game. Well, now with that Louisville loss, as you see it in there, Memphis has a chance now to win that white division, but they must win today. The UNC and Charlotte will play at Southern Miss tomorrow, so that's a big game. They must lose that game. Memphis must win here, and, of course, Tulane and Cincinnati have already since their divisions. Chris Garner brings it into front court, met there by Baker defensively. Difference in field goal shooting. And well, it's going to be a hand check. Well, now we're going to call him. Say, wait, yeah. Now what wait, happened here? I don't know. <laughs> we had a discussion maybe during timeout. You know, as long as the referees keep consistency, players really don't care. And I think as a player, I, I was more interested in being protected when I was shooting than anything else. Because mm -hmm. any little kind of bump or tick on the elbow or anything will throw a shot off a lot. So as a player, that's what you're really looking for. Second team foul now uh, in Cincinnati. Sometimes you'll watch down low as guys post up, though, and they get the ball. The offensive player will be forcing a lot of the contact. I find it interesting, too, here. Yeah. Brandon has taken a front position against Adebayo, then instead of playing behind, right. see how he's running. Yeah, unfortunately, help from the weak side as you see him come across there. Time running down on the clock. Bradford puts up a short shot. It's loose on the floor. Brandon picks it up for Cincinnati. We mentioned before, Cincinnati second in rebounding in the country. They are, they are really get after it on the boards, especially the defensive boards. One of the most physical, if not the most physical team in college well, basketball. Sports and all alone, they ought to game the ball. Eh? Well, they doubled, they tripled him then, John. And he walked with that one. Well, coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, boxing from Paris, France, the WBC World Lightweight Championship. Plus, our Wide World Classic segment, Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns, the 81 World Welterweight Championship, and an interview with Sugar Ray as he prepares to re-enter the ring. Also highlights of Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler. That's coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Well, the action really continues here. 
This is a wild game. Wild game. Air ball, offensive foul, steals. A lot of the stuff you don't see in a real passive game. This is an aggressive basketball game. Let's watch Henderson going to the basket. Sometimes when you take that ball from all the way out top, all the way in dribbling, even if the guy moves just a little bit, you're going to get the offensive foul. Again, you're almost forcing the contact. Well, that's the first time that we have seen the Memphis midcourt trap, and Cincinnati handled it easily. Brannon tried to work the offensive glass, knocked out of his hands out of bounds, and Cincinnati maintains possession. Henderson gets his first rest of the game. Now, Danny Fortson's going to have to kick that ball out quickly. You know, when you get double and triple team like that, what you want to do is get rid of the ball as the guys are coming at you, not once they get to you, because then even their momentum to get back and play their men on defense is very difficult. So Danny's going to have to kick that ball out quicker. Well, that time he caught the inbounds pass, and three men collapsed on him, and he drew the contact. He's going to go to the line. Fortson, again, a big man, pretty good free throw shooter at 76% from the line. And 63% from the field. Better than 21 points a game, almost 10 rebounds a game. John already talked about his field goal percentage. Of course, he shoots a lot in close. You're going to have that high percentage. He's 11 points here today to go to number two in scoring. Of course, number one is the big O. Maybe the greatest player ever. Yeah. Oscar Robinson. Averaged a triple double, John. Oscar Robertson averaged a triple double. Unbelievable. Dorian Richards checked into the lineup now for Memphis. And a bio outside. Brandon, however, will not challenge him out there. You know, Bobby Huggins' brand of defense, very aggressive. Overplay, man to man, double team. They switch. Entry pass into Richards. Had to kick it back outside. The long range shot's going to be an air ball that time by Harry Allen. And Fortson had it, and quickly the Bearcats are in front court again. Burton blows by his man, had it knocked out of bounds. And the spectacular, yes, yeah, spectacular rejection. Reuben Patterson looks tired. He he's signaling over to Bobby to get him out. He wants a breather. This game is this game's intense. You know when you got to play defense on both ends and and there's a lot of grabbing and shoving and pushing it. You can get tired out there pretty quick. Dorian Richards with that rejection. Cedric Henderson didn't last on the bench very long. And Burton's going to pull the trigger from the outside, and you see the result. That's only his second. He's hit them both. I think that he and uh, Fortson ought to play a little two-on-two -on, -two on that side. That way, the guy can't drop back open uh, double and triple team, Fortson. Six points now, Darnell Burton. 14-8, Cincinnati advantage. Lob pass down low. They played it perfectly that time. It was intended for Henderson. They had the mismatch set up there. But the defender on the play took care of business and quickly out of Memphis. 11.49 to go, first half of play here at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. Cincinnati, of course, in the blue division has since the title, number one seed in the conference, conference tournament that starts this week. Marquette, uh, probably a bubble team there, 17-8. A tough loss to Cincinnati the other night at home. And a... Uh, Big win for Tulane today. So, Conference USA trying to get as many teams possible in that tournament, trying to look the best they can. Their tournament, I think, is very important to them. Memphis hadn't scored in about four and a half I was, minutes. I was going to say, there you go. that one will count. They finally got the ball down low on the block to Adebayo. It was a 10-2 run over the last four and a half minutes for the Bearcats until Adebayo converted. Let's take a look at him. Kind of a broken play, not really a post-up. Adebayo kind of rolling to the hoop. Good look. Very good look. And Baker with the foul. Since Brandon has been on uh, Adebayo, he really hadn't even seen the ball. Harry Allen on a nice feed, and Adebayo can't convert on the possible three-point play, and Memphis keeps the pressure on. It looks like a 2-2-1 zone press. Elvin Levitt checked into the lineup for Cincinnati. This is uh, Brandon in front court. See, I think Brandon's got an attacker. He had a two-on-one. Uh -huh. on he and Fortson, what better And he kicked it back for? outside. Yeah, and that's exactly what a press wants. If, if you break him down, you better take advantage of it. This is Levitt. Here's the entry pass into Fortson. They quickly double on him. Levitt got it back. Down to six on the shot clock. Fortson with a spin. Off-balance shot won't go. Rebound Harry Allen. Here's the outlet pass. Lead to Garner. 
He challenges, kicks it off, nice and they game. can't get it to fall in the presence of Henderson, but he got it back and put it up and in. You know, good fast break by Memphis. I, you know, Fortson and Burton are the ones that's got to play one, two on two. Burton's a threat from out high. They can't double team down off of him. They got to get him and Fortson on the same side of the floor. Well, you can tell Bob Huggins had his club do its homework on breaking this pressure because they did. They've handled it well every time. Here's the alley-oop, and the finish won't go. Brandon picks it up. He won't get that one. I think the backboard was yeah, still shaking. Yeah, absolutely. The backboard was shaken. Knock that one off the rim. And a mile won't go. There's Richards down low, and he's hammered underneath, and I think it's Fortson. Larry Finch in that last time out must have had something to say because his Tigers came out a lot more aggressive like they did at the beginning of the game. Let's take a look at that last play. There's the lob pass. You see him go up for the dunk. That's Levitt. Didn't get him, but watch the ball. See the backboard <laughs> shake it? Right, reminds me of that. Uh, you should do that on a playground. Yeah, shake you shake board. it like that. It reminds me of that uh, TV commercial, too, where the uh, thing is going back and forth and nobody can score. The backboard's jumping back and forth. Patterson hits the first one. Excuse me, that's Richard. Richard's Richard, yeah. a 45% free throw shooter, so he hits two in a row. That looks good. Looks like he's got a pretty good release, John. Maybe it could be one of those confidence yeah, the rotation's things. not very good, though. It's kind yeah. of sideways and not a lot of spin. Next two of these last two minutes, it's been a 6-0 run. There again, There see? again, they had it set up, that's yeah. That's right. Brandon had the ball. Now, if, if they don't want Brandon doing that, they ought to put another guy there who can handle the ball and go two on one. What? Burton let it fly from way outside. We're going to have a whistle and a foul. It could be Fortson again, so if it is, he's picked up two quick ones. You know, if you look, if you look at Danny Fortson, that's how he gets a lot of his fouls. He's very aggressive to the board. Watch this little screen over there. It looks like the Berlin Wall. <laughs> There he is over the, the back, yeah. Pointer, and then, of course, in the confusion maybe of trying to get around to the shooter, they're hoping to get an offensive rebound, but a good screen at that time. And Fortson frustrated over the back, picks up his second foul. And that's with uh, 10 minutes to go here in the uh, first half. So that's a tough foul. Allen in trouble. Here comes the heavy pressure. Again, the ball is knocked away. Now they sit on it. He's got to give it up. Finally does. Henderson in underneath. Score it. And the foul. Monroe gets credit for the personal foul. It is six points for Henderson, and he'll go to the line. An opportunity to complete the three-point play. Uh, you call it here. Nice hustle on the four by Allen. Did he walk? Uh, you got to turn over, don't you? If you just sit there, it's not a walk. You have no, to I'm, move. I'm don't talking you? about Henderson. Oh, okay. Like Henderson took about four steps. <laughs> he didn't put the ball on the floor. Missed the free throw. Out of bio tries oh! to follow, and then Henderson grabs it and slams it through. He's got eight points. Feet in Memphis at the pyramid. That's a 10 point run for Memphis. 18 14, Tigers lead. Damon Flint into the lineup for Cincinnati. I think one of the problems is Cincinnati's breaking the press and not taking advantage of it. 10 0 run in the last two minutes and 10 seconds. Brandon had it, was stripped by Allen. Henderson gets the hoop. Henderson gets the hoop. He misses the free throw. Out of bio on the shot. Here comes Henderson. Nobody boxing him out because he was a free throw shooter. He sneaks in behind. So Burton will go to the free throw line. Can't get that one to fall tonight. Dangerous Minds moves to Saturday. Brand new episode followed by Eddie Murphy, Robin Gibbons, David Allen Greer, Halle Berry, Martin Lawrence, and Boomerang on the Saturday Night Movie here on ABC. Burden splits the free throws. He's an 82% free throw shooter. As we well know, an excellent three-point shooter. I think they got to take more advantage of that Cincinnati since he has hit two in a row here today. Flint reached around, knocked it away. Memphis basketball. Cincinnati, by the way, getting their first couple of points in three minutes. You can see Damon Flint's thumb is bandaged. It's questionable to play. 
They need his ball handling. Of course, that's his right hand. That'll affect his shooting son. That'll be an air ball caught in midair by Henderson, and then he's fouled underneath. <laughs> Reuben Patterson picks up his second personal. Henderson with two fouls. A very dangerous move on his part. Could have gotten his third foul. He'll go to the line again. Pretty good free throw shooter, almost 70%. Missed his last free throw. Followed it with a dunk, though. But he traded every one of those. Games. <laughs> Henderson knocks down the first offering. A 68% free throw shooter, averaging 16 points a game and nearly seven rebounds a contest. points now double figures for Henderson 2-2-1 two, two, zone press let's see what Cincinnati been breaking the press but not getting anything out of it well this time they tried to attack got caught in underneath rebound follow big end up there and the basket is up and in for Monroe that's his first basket in place of Fortson who's on the bench with two personals well, you'll lose a lot of offense without Fortson, but Cincinnati has a lot of guys who get after it on the board. They'll keep that advantage up. Entry pass out of Bile. Starting to back in. Spin move away from the defender. Missed it high off the glass. Martin with the rebound, and here go the Bearcats the other way. Patterson works his man off. Oh, that's tapped up and in beautifully. Let's see who they give it to. If they give it to Martin or Monroe. They give it to Monroe. You know, Bobby Huggins really likes Martin. Got him late in the season. Eligible only after the first of the year. Freshman really likes his activity. Thinks he's going to be one heck of a ball player. He's got a chance to play here today with Fortson in foul trouble. So let's watch how he reacts. One point advantage on the alley-oop. Good court sense there. Turned open to the ball right way. Saw it coming. Good defense by Martin. Burton slicing to the basket. Nothing there. Rebound. They get tied up. Richards ties them up. It's going to be a jump ball. The possession arrow in favor of Cincinnati. Breaking the action. 7.21 to go. First half of play. This has been a wild shoot-around affair. 2019 Memphis leads. Team here all the way from outside of Tacoma, Washington. Right. Out of way. the great Pacific Northwest. A late developer. One of those last minute recruiting things and hopefully Memphis says themselves a heck of a ball player for the next three years. Memphis in a zone defense looks like. First time little, we've seen it today. A little passive pressure. Well they couldn't connect on the dunk I think it still it, worked the same way they got the two points. That makes Flint mad he doesn't get the assist. <laughs> Ruben Patterson. I threw that great pass and you missed it then you tipped it in. <laughs> He's got six points. <laughs> Patterson gets a hoop and a rebound. <laughs> Chad Allen back in the lineup as you see him move quickly down low on the block for Memphis. Now he pops back outside, now has the ball. Henderson took a look at the hoop. Richards. Right now they're trying to spread Cincinnati out and get some post-up defense. There's the alley hoop down low. Richards lost it, couldn't control it. And a bile tries to follow. Memphis with an awful lot of offensive rebounds today. With a team like Cincinnati, you can only contribute that to their execution on offense, causing some switches, getting some mismatches. But Bobby Huggins does not like that at all. That was on Martin. That'll be his. <laughs> How many offensive rebounds you going to give him? Come on, guys. So that'll send out a bile to the line for uh, an opportunity to make two. Hey, tomorrow at 3.45 Eastern on ABC Sports 4, Payne Weber College Basketball. Most of you will see the ACC Conference Battle, number 7, Duke, number 8, North Carolina. Big 12, number 1, Kansas, goes to Nebraska. Jacques Vaughn, Rafe LaFrance. It's going to be exciting basketball tomorrow. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Henderson hits him. Head up. Not to score 21 all, and Memphis still is on. See how this works. Yeah. 
quickly uh, Cincinnati works it yeah. down along the baseline. John, they did not collapse on the basketball that time at all defensively. Yeah, I'm not so sure why the switch in defense came. I thought Memphis was playing pretty well, getting some turnovers. Maybe uh, Larry thinks his team's a little bit tired in the end here of the first half, wanted to give him a little rest, but well, he had the Bearcats on the run for a while there. They couldn't, uh, they needed a handle on the ball. Garner. Now Henderson. Richard sets the screen. And he has it knocked out of his hands, and they get him with a foul on the reach in. That's Burton. Is he behind the three point line? That may give him three shots, because he was going up to shoot. There was no doubt about that. Bob Huggins displeased with that one, or maybe more disbelief that it was even whistled. Yeah, Bob says, give me a whistle. Let me let me help you guys. <laughs> you know, I you know, you almost got to agree with him in a lot of banging and hand holding yep. and uh, down low look, like you said almost looks like a scrub Larry Finch is all the way out at midcourt stating his case right now now walking toward the officials still stating his case he's still on the on the walk he wants three shots and now the coaches are saying you got to get back behind the line and Larry is very hot Larry I think's testing the, his final game here. yeah against the emotion. They yeah. just called the T. They, they have got to. to. They, they got to have to because he because he walked past the line. Yeah, you got to call it. You got to get that, you know. I wouldn't want to be those officials if they threw him out, though. In fact, I don't know if I want to sit here if they throw him out. Boy, he's definitely trying to shoot if you watch this. I mean, there's there's it's it's obvious what he's trying to do. He's going up for the shot. He gets the screen. See? Boom, I'm going up. Uh, first of all, I don't think it's a foul. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, the ball, the hands on the ball. Well, things are getting a little. Just a second, John. Larry Finch yeah, is pretty hot I here. I understand right now. that, but the hands on the ball, mm -hmm. guy. Now, first of all, it may not have been a foul, but if it was, he's going up to shoot. There's no doubt about that. Everybody in the place knows that, including Bob Huggins. Well, we know the technical is on head coach Larry Finch. Now that's the ninth team foul, so it'll either be the one and one if they say he's not shooting or three shots so you'll have a technical first well they are going to give him three free throws okay well that's the right call okay now, but and the technical then will be on larry pitch the Memphis coach right who now has Returned behind the coaching line, Bob Not Huggins. Barely, yeah. barely behind it. <laughs> hey, yeah, he's, yeah, he's took. His touch is over the line right now. 13 points for Henderson as he gets all three. You see the coaching line right there, and of course Larry was all the way out onto uh, past even the center court. And Darnell Burton now will go to the line at the other end to shoot the technical. It's kind of interesting what what he came out to argue about was right. He just did it in the wrong way. Yeah. He, uh, you can't come out on the floor like that. There's no doubt about it. I think he was kind of testing his final game here today. And Burton gets both. Of course, Cincinnati will get the ball out. Bench technical. Even if they had the ball, they would have gotten it out. Or didn't have the ball, excuse me. Larry Finch isn't finished yet. As the conversation continues, I'm sure they're just explaining to let him, let him, let me officiate. We're, we were talking about it, you know. And you see the assistants around Larry Finch, just in case. Now Huggins has a question. He wants to find out, which is his prerogative. There he wants is. to know. And guess what? He's out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? They have just asked for more security behind the opposing bench, so apparently it must be getting a bit testy from the fans there. Well, of course, they've got a lot of students right behind the bench there, which is where I would put them if I was sure running the show. I think most schools do that. All right, we're back to action finally. You know, a lot of times after a delay like this, the momentum will change in a ball game. I thought the momentum really favored Cincinnati. Coming into that technical foul and well, the turnover, turnover. Yeah. by Cincinnati. Now, how often do we see that call anymore in basketball? The carrying Common of the basketball, up, yeah. Hardly ever. Year. Yeah. <laughs> they had talked about that uh, at the very beginning of the season. The officials were told to uh, call that 
I mean, you, more you, times than we never saw it. Our producer Tommy Hewitt pointed out as I was getting ready, they even Garden, he, he was carrying the ball as he brings it down slowly. Free pass and out of bottom, knocked away. Of course, a point of emphasis this year by the NCAA officiating committee. And, uh, you know, it's a real tough call. You, you know, you almost either got to start calling it right at the beginning of the game to get everybody to quit doing it or you got to let it go. Mm -hmm. And you got to call it, you know, four or five times in a row. Garner with two on the shot clock. Henderson in traffic. And the clockson will sound, but it is Cincinnati basketball, so they play on. Bobby Huggins still holding Danny Fortson out of the ball game. Well, I don't think you'll see him the rest of the half, do you? Um, I, you know, if he gets down to the two or three minute mark without losing a lot of momentum, he will. Garner off the steal. Harry Allen. Yeah, no sense for Patterson to be handling the ball out that far, trying to go one on one. That's that's the time where Bobby says that. He can't understand what Patterson's doing, and the next minute he'll make a spectacular play. But, you know, Patterson trying to go one on two at 25 feet doesn't make any sense. We've had seven ties in this game and eight lead changes. That long three by Burton won't go down. Martin gives it off along the baseline. Good thing he did. Good feed by Martin. Yeah. Good look by the young freshman. <laughs> And a break in the action. Point advantage for the Cincinnati Bearcats at 27-26. Reuben Patterson going one on two from 20 feet will catch the ire of Bobby Huggins. Here's Garner on a steal. Garner, of course, one steal at least in his last 38 games. The pass to Allen for the layup. Garner... 25 steals in his last seven games. And of course, you can see there, seventh uh, in the all time NCAA steal record leader this year. Down low, they forced that one that time. Too much traffic. Henderson couldn't handle it. And on the turnover, Cincinnati in front court. Memphis back into the man to man. Damon Flint thought about it, didn't pull the trigger, whistle away from the ball. Three-second lane violation against Cincinnati. I think they got Monroe for camping out down there. Fortson remains on the bench. Here comes Larry Finch Jr. into the ball game. Into front court, Cincinnati staying in the zone. Cincinnati in the zone, Fortson on the bench. Again, they look for Adebayo. He's got space in the lane. That one's short off the art. Offensive rebound, Chad Allen. He put it up. Adebayo with the ball. Well, I know that hey, you're, you're going to find a substitute. Here comes Patterson back. Every time they get an offensive rebound, Huggins puts somebody else in. Sunday Adebayo now has seven points as Clint comes into front court on the dribble. Now give it off to Melvin Levin. Martin. And they work the perimeter, and now heavy banging in underneath. Whistle, foul called. I think it's going to go against Cincinnati. It is, and I think it's against Roderick Monroe. And that'll be his second. Got a bio on the shot. And of course, here comes the rebound to Allen. He's going to go back up. Nobody boxes out. Out of bio. Everybody goes to Allen. And I'm elevating, buddy. And right now, Bobby Huggins is elevating to go put Patterson back in the game. That's probably at least the eighth, ninth offensive rebound uh, for Memphis, and I'll bet six of them resulted in putbacks. Well, we take the walk to the other end of the court, as now Memphis is in the bonus. They're in double bonus. They'll get two shots. Ten fouls on the Bearcats, five on the Memphis Tigers. And that one did not look good that time by Harry Allen. And Danny Fortson right now having a tough afternoon. Got into early foul trouble. He's been on the bench most of the first half. Bobby maintains uh, some closeness here to Memphis. He will not gamble putting uh, him back in the ballgame. He'll, he'll keep the three fouls for the second half. Memphis back into his zone. I think it's the time you got to go to Burton. There he is. Now they're looking for him. Baseline. Yeah, Allen got a piece oh. of it. Burton still banked it in. Shot off the glass. 
Wow. That's a tough angle. <laughs> I'd like to see that one again. That's 11 points, Darnell Burton. Larry Finch Jr. controlling play on the outside. Now they swing to Allen. Cincinnati in a matchup zone. Did he throw an elbow? Did he throw an elbow on that side, or did they just call some rough play? Uh, we may have a technical on the bench somewhere, because Bobby looking down at the bench. What do we got? And Bobby Huggins, is it, it was it on Huggins or just no, on the no, bench? No, no, it wasn't on Huggins, on the bench. on the bench, yeah. We got a bunch of assistants sitting over. I'm not sure which one they pointed at. It's a bench technical, two free throws. And of course, Memphis will keep the ball. And Henderson draws the iron, and that's all. 13 points right now for Henderson. Coming up at halftime, the MCI halftime report. John Saunders back in the New York studios. Well, Larry Finch has been teed up, and so now has the Cincinnati bench. This game's had a little bit of everything. And we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're just about halfway through, but that second half should be interesting. Just under two minutes to go here in the first half of play. Cincinnati remains in the matchup zone, so both teams are playing the matchup. Cincinnati a little bit more aggressive with theirs. They'll try to trap, jump into passing lanes. Stein fall into the lineup now. Keep an eye on him. You can shoot the threes. Yes, he can. Finch penetrating move. Kick it off in underneath. Offensive foul. Yes. A little bit out of control. They stay under control in there when you're going to the basket. Good look, but uh, couldn't keep his momentum. Gets the offensive foul. 16 fouls on Memphis. Tough to follow a legend, that's for sure. Follow your father into a place like this. He's been here for that long. It makes it real difficult. Well, he, of course, Larry Finch played on the Special K Larry Keenan team that went all the way to the Final Four championship game and ended up losing them to UCLA when Bill Walton lit it up for 44. 1973, you're right. Then his assistant coach, Larry, took uh, back to the Final Four in 85. Well, Damon Ooh, Flynn, Flynn let it fly from the three line and he, got it. He's been struggling shooting this year, only 36%. Field goal percentage only 23 from three point, and they'd like to see his touch come back. That's for sure. Well, he makes a big difference when healthy. Oh, he's really struggled all year from the field. Bradford, drop it down low. We told you Steinfall can pull the trigger from the outside. Out of bio, will not. Garner does. It gets it. It's good enough for a three. And that's his first basket of the afternoon. And they need to have Chris Garner come alive, John. Yeah, game deuced up again. 42 seconds left in the half. Cincinnati looks like they're going to try to hold for one, but that still gives Memphis about 10 to 12, 15 seconds to come back. They rise as one, hoping for the Memphis Tigers to put on a defensive stop against the Bearcats. start too soon here but Garner and he's foul. foul will be on Garner college basketball double head by the way Rick Majerus the Utah head coach will be in the studio tomorrow with John Saunders it was his seventh team foul on Memphis, so that gave Cincinnati the one plus the one bonus. Burton trying to direct traffic out here, make sure everybody's in position. Looks like Cincinnati's going to put some full court pressure on. Always good when you hit that free throw, get you, let you set up. Bobby Huggins substituting for Burton. Hey, getting them out of there. Want to make sure he doesn't get pick up a. Third foul. That's right. Third yeah. foul here late in the half. Good move by Bobby Huggins. So Davis checks in. Allen is going to be the trigger man on the inbounds pass. You're going to see full court pressure coming up here now by Cincinnati. Yeah. We have 13 seconds to go. Yeah, there's a lot of time to go. I mean, it's, time's not even a factor here. Cincinnati putting pressure, just wanting to allow them to use up time so they can't come down here and set up something half court. Garner's going to break it easily off. The they also don't want to take Allen. it too quick, too. See? Yep. Allen in traffic. See, now you it. give Cincinnati a time for shot. 
They've got three seconds on the clock. Patterson right to the basket. Okay. Finger flip, he got it. It's good as the horn sound. You called that one, John. They gave the ball up too quickly at the other end, and then Cincinnati got it back and capitalized. When you got the ball down here, you want to really go at the basket with about five seconds to go. Memphis got it across. They started with nine seconds. Look at how much time Cincinnati has, and five and a half seconds is plenty of time to get off a shot. And as you see Cincinnati on a two-on-two, -two, shot off in plenty of time. And that was a mental miscue by the Tigers. And it makes now for a four-point advantage. Cincinnati leads at 36-32 over Memphis at the half. Stay tuned for John Saunders' scores highlights after these messages and a word from our AB first half of play, and it is fast and furious. Yeah, Garner on a nice feed to Henderson. He misses and follows. Good play. Uh, Sunday out of bio, really active on the boards. You know, Memphis really getting a lot of offensive rebounds. Uh, they had 15 rebounds and a half. 11 of them were offensive rebounds and converted. Block shot, and of course, the leading scorer in the first half or close to Reuben Patterson on a dunk. And this is a great shot by Burton. I mean, kissed off the glass from that angle, and Burton had 13 for the half. Well, there you go. As you see, the 52% field goal percentage from the floor compared to 37 for Memphis. But yet, it is still a four-point advantage for Cincinnati. And the second chance points were huge for the Bearcats. And the scoring leaders, you see Burton and Patterson. And Danny Fortson, who sat most of the first half, he picked up two quick personal fouls, only has four points in this game. I don't know if Bobby was mad at him or just wanted to keep him out because uh, he didn't want to pick up his third foul. But... Uh, Interesting there, John. 24 and 1 when they lead at the half. And Allen finger flips it in. Fortson ordinarily would have put a big body on him coming in there, but just swatted at the ball, so he's thinking about those fouls. That's Chad Allen's first basket of the afternoon. He gets it to open the second half of play. Looks like Memphis is back into a man to man. David Flint. Used the little hook move and didn't get called for it on the baseline. Well, and they're going to call offensive. They're going to go traveling. Yeah, they called the travel foul, but he used the hook move to get around. Yeah. And, uh, there was no whistle. Yeah, you got. If you use that hook move, you got to keep that arm down low. The higher you put it, the more visible it is for fishers to see it. They're posting up Gardner down there low, playing with about a six-inch advantage, and Bobby Huggins going right to that weakness. Allen looks inside. Adebayo's got it. Adebayo being. Triple team had it rejected and knocked out of bounds. Well, he was double teamed by two guys, got around him, and then Danny Fortson right there for the block. Adebayo may have to look around. He's got three guys around him for somebody to pass to. Better off playing a uh, kind of two-man game, kick it back out, and then get it back again. Swing to the outside. Henderson's going to let it fly, and he rattles down the three. Henderson with 17. That's his first long jumper. He had uh, 0 for 2 in the first half from the three-point range. Four for got a lot on offensive rebound. Memphis takes a one-point lead, but not for long. And Ruben Patterson slices down the center of the lane. And Classic give and go from Fortson. That, that plays older than you are, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad something is. That's a basic, man. <laughs> <laughs> Patterson, uh, Patterson, quick, you know, he, what happens is the defensive man turns his head just a little bit to look at the pass, the slice to the hoop, the bounce pass, and the layup. That's going to be a foul on the shot, an opportunity to convert the four-point play now for Henderson. Might have been a freshman mistake there. You did a nice job complimenting him. But Martin, uh, this far out, you can go at the block, but you want to make sure you run by somebody. You don't want to, you know, you're really not going to block that many shots out there. You just want to bother him, and there he's going to give him a chance for a four-point play. Good well, square up, up. Yeah. that's right. Yeah, he really Good rotation square. on the ball, and zip. Four fouls, or rather two fouls on uh, Martin as Henderson completes the four-point play. Well, Henderson's come out uh, with the feel yeah. here in the second half. Interesting, too, because John and I talked about during the halftime, how would Memphis come out of the locker room? Did they blow off everything in the first half? All the emotion, apparently not. 
But they're still playing with a lot of fire right now. Patterson thought about it. Now works his way along the baseline and has to back it outside. In trouble, now Fortson. Against Chad Allen. Working his way inside, and that one will not fall. Martin with the rebound, and now some rough stuff, and quickly the officials are there to separate the players. Again, Fortson banging his way into the middle probably didn't get the foul call there because he essentially was forcing the contact. Adebayo with the foul. That'll be his first. Fortson pleading with the officials to make sure they keep an eye on Maybe he's rounds all three of them. See if it does any good. Well, he's politicking. Ruben Patterson looks inside. Now spots from behind the three. Short off the front of the iron. Out of bottle with a rebound. I think we should have gone down to Fortson, back out. He had a better shot. Had a better look at the basket. Henderson feeling it. And that one's too far off the far side of the iron. And hit his last two. Totally different look for a starting lineup for Bobby Huggins. Well, he's gone back with Damon Flint and Martin, and Martin right there off the uh, pass from Good Fortson. Cut. Yeah. Fortson, nice, huh? Sees the floor nice. Two quick assists here in the second half. Martin, his first basket. And Chris Garner, the point guard for Memphis, I think, John, is really going to have to get more involved scoring a little bit. He's going to have to pick up some of the load. Chad Allen, finger flip, and that'll be a goal tip right there. Now again, a freshman mistake. That ball was short, was going to hit the rim, though, and obviously on the way down. Now, you know, if you're in the beginning of a ball game, you want to try to intimidate somebody, that's okay. You're not going to intimidate anybody this part of the game. See, that ball's short, but uh, ball's obviously on its way down. Again, they pressure, and Cincinnati breaks it easily. Melvin Levitt. Yeah, but you know... Not the way Henderson they got. broke the press, but they didn't get anything out of it. You know, it's he a, pointed that out it's the first continual. Half. It's, yeah. You gotta, you break that press down, you gotta attack it. Allen pulls up for three. Got it. Harry Allen. Bobby may want a timeout here. Nine points for Harry Allen, and Cincinnati's Bobby Huggins has seen it up. He's got the 22nd timeout. I'm not sure there's a lot he can do about that. You know, these, those shots are coming pretty deep. Uh, he likes to focus on a nice screen, got Allen a wide open three. Three-point field goals in the first half. Memphis was one of seven. Here in the second, they are three of three, and they're on a 14-4 scoring run. Memphis again on the press. Let's see if Cincinnati can break it and get something out of it. Largest lead for both teams has been six points. See, there they attacked it. See, there they attacked the press. That's even though the first they didn't, time. That's right. Even though they didn't get a real easy basket, they, they still caught Memphis in transition on defense and got Fortson a nice shot. He just didn't, he just missed it. And Larry Finch says it's too warm in here for him. <laughs> I'm taking his coat off. I don't care how I look. Larry knows, Larry knows he's got some coaching left in this one. This yeah, one's going does. down to the wire. Yep. Fortson at the line. Larry Finch, his last game here as head coach at the Pyramid of the Memphis Tigers. They head to Conference USA Tournament next week. That will be played in St. Louis. And that one will not fall. Allen with a rebound. And here comes Garner quickly in the front court on the dribble. Give it up. Out of bio. Spin move off the glass and in. Well, Memphis coming out hot. That'll help them play. You know, when you get those field goals, you, you get that adrenaline in your legs, you play a little bit better D. Again, you saw there, Martin with the ball. They had a three on two. He didn't turn and, and, and aggressively take that three on two. Out of bio now with nine points in the game. Let's swing to Burton. He is the three bomb, and that one won't go. Look at Fortson working hard on the offensive end, and you see why he pays dividends right there. Seven points now. Danny Fortson, ball loose. Garner has it. Oh, he's quick. Trouble. Boy, he is quick. He lost that ball. I thought it was coming here, and he, he was on it in two steps. I was getting ready to leave the uh, <laughs> table in front here. I'm not hanging around, John, when those big bodies are flying. Yeah, Fortson doing a nice job of making sure he doesn't get that 
third foul here early so he can play his game at the end. Allen trying to force the pass that time to Henderson and tossed it away. But right now, as we head to our timeout, it is 48-43. Memphis has moved out in front over the Bears. College basketball on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Boost, the perfect snack for imperfect people. MCI, is this a great time or what? Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo, it works. And the U.S. Army, be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. Welcome back, everybody, here at the Pyramid. Larry Finch coaching his last game in this building as head coach of Memphis. And on the inbounds play, knocked out of bounds. Another reason there's a lot of intensity here. You know, you've got seniors playing. It's senior day. Uh, they don't want to lose their last game. Larry didn't want to lose his last game right. here in the building. So Memphis has a lot of stake. And, you know, when you're on the road, that's tough. Uh, well, that's tough to handle for Cincinnati, even though they've won nine in a row in the conference. This has been a rough and tumble affair from the opening cap in the first half. Yeah, Allen and Patterson on a little love fest down there. <laughs> they not want to quit hugging each other on the inbounds. All right, you see the pressure again applied, and once again, Cincinnati takes care of business. You know, interesting enough, you know, Fortune's out of the game again. Yeah, Monroe is back in the line of picking if, his spot. Uh, Coach is dissatisfied with him or what? Yep. And there's Roderick Monroe right there, who's filling in for Fortson. Yeah, he is. I think Bobby's over there lecturing to Fortson right now. Sitting right with him. There have been nine lead changes in this game. And quickly a 20-second timeout by Memphis. Right now, let's go to New York, and here is ABC's John Saunders. Thanks, Jim. Wake against Florida State, big matchup in the ACC. Lamar Greer, open for a three, knocks it down with about a minute to go. Their last field goal of the game, but Florida State adds four free throws and knocks off Wake 59-55. Duke now the champions in the ACC. Wake is going to lose that number one seed. In Arkansas against LSU, Dale Brown's Final home game, 66-64, similar to Larry Finch. Back to you guys. And our score here, Memphis 48, Cincinnati 45, with a little more than 14 minutes to play in this game. Final conference USA game for both teams. And you see the difference in percentage here by what took place in the first half and now in the second. Allen's going the wrong way. Oh, but they got him open underneath oh. and hit from behind. Adebayo freed himself. The pass got there. Good hustle by Damon Flint to get back and just foul. Cincinnati really putting some pressure on now defensively. Trapping out. Watch Allen. It's get out of my way, he says, <laughs> so I can pass the ball. Damon Flint coming behind, going to make Adebayo earn those two, not dunk them, not dunk it down. Flint's first personal. This game really, John, had been within three points the entire game until this last three and a half minutes. Woo! Adebayo in double figures now. He has ten. Playing with a brace on his right knee. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, John and I were here when the uh, misfortune took Louisville. place. Yeah, the Louisville game, and he... Uh, He's got a tear in the interior cruciate. Sat out the next game and has come back on a tear since then. Well, I'll tell you what, Memphis is doing a nice job of pressing, causing a lot of havoc, and not allowing any easy baskets off the press. Knocked away another Cincinnati turnover. They now have 13. And that is not going to please Bob Huggins, the head coach of Cincinnati at all. Adebayo back outside. Henderson has already drained one three. That one is knocked away, however. Pretty good hustle by Patterson, but he couldn't come up with it. Chad Allen. Give it off. Baseline. Adebayo got it. Chad Allen. little doopsy doodle there behind the head for the big guy. And Sunday Adebayo now with 12. 16. You know those big guys always want to play guard. You know what I mean? <laughs> they all bring bringing up the floor. They want to get fancy. Long distance dialing. That one, however, will not go for Burton. And there's Chan Allen with a rebound quickly to Garner. It's a lob. For the lob, but it was knocked away. But Garner got it back down low on the block. Henderson Ooh. had it blocked from behind by Martin. Block. Wow. wow. John, this is some serious 
his highlight <laughs> film material here. Here's Allen. Watch this little Dukes of Doodle behind the head. He's big. Whoop! Nice play. Good feed. Out of bio on the finish. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, he's. They're having fun anyway, too. It's always good you can play in a pressure game like this and have fun. Well, didn't take long for Danny Fortson to get off the pine and get back into the game. They got to get the ball down low to him, man. He and Burton got a little, little two on two. That way, Burton's man can't double team. Chad Allen. Drop down low. That pass, however, was Cincinnati. Damon Flynn. Kicks it back outside. Burton is short off the front of the iron. Ball battled for it, loose on the floor. Players go down. It's still loose. It's a rugby scrum. And finally, it'll be a jump ball. The possession arrow in the favor of Cincinnati. I'll tell you what, though. You see what the penetration does. Damon Flint brings the ball all the way down to the free throw line. Didn't get a basket, but got Burton a great look from three-point range. you got to put pressure on the defense when they're pressing it. Entry pass for now Brandon. They work around the perimeter. Now drop down low on the block. Top off balance. Wild shot taken. Ball is loose. Comes down in the control of Memphis. Chris Carter taking it right down the center of the lane. And it went drop for him. Werner got it back. That one won't go. Henderson on the follow and he got it to fall in. 23 points now. Cedric Henderson. Plus you get a crowd like this. Puts a lot of adrenaline in you. Makes you play D a little bit better. Garner matched up against Flint. Out of bio, comes out to trap a double. Now Brandon, now Fortune. In traffic, whistle, foul called, stop and play. I don't know if there's anybody quicker in the country than this guy Garner. Watch acceleration, a little bit too much spin on the ball. Ball goes up, he gets it back. Quick pass. Boom. Well, you know, these big guys just miss on purpose to get rebounds, you know. Good follow by Pat Henderson. Seven points for Danny Fortson today. Now eight. Now he's got to go to work. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. That time Memphis extended their defense, thus allowing him not to double and triple team Fortson. He gets a ball in there one-on-one. -on -one. You're not going to stop him. He's going to get a basket of foul. Four of five at the free throw line. Down from a time of six and nine points. He came in averaging a little better than 21 points per contest. 11.37 to go. Memphis out in front of Cincinnati. Well, John, lots of signs here. Hey, they knew you were coming to town. Yeah, yeah. Bearcat, that Cincinnati no, fans no, down grandpa. here. No, Tiger com country. Grandpa. Not yet. 53-47. <laughs> Memphis out in front. Cincinnati a little bit more passive now and their defense looks like they're playing a 1-3-1 zone. May trap out of it. Bobby likes to trap out of this press. Brandon six points in the second half right now for Memphis. Only 11 for Cincinnati. Allen frees himself baseline. That one won't fall, however, and Fortson has the rebound. Allen knocks it away. Fortson got it back. Well, for a guy, John, who is supposed to not feel real good with that wrist on being all taped up. Damon Flint's getting playing plenty of playing time now. I think they have to have his leadership on the floor here. Memphis in a zone also. Well, Patterson has it rejected by Henderson, and here goes the Tigers the other way. Whoa. And it's stolen back. Fortson, he's got Patterson on the wing, and it was knocked out of bounds by Memphis. As Bradford got back to get a hand on it and knock it away. Bradford leaves. Harry Allen back into the lineup now for Memphis. And that will be a Boy, pass a which of, was tipped. Yeah, it was of, tipped. A lot of quickness in this game. Guys getting their hands on the ball, knocking it out of bounds. That bothers. There's, there's an accumulation kind of bothersome to that. The, the guys, you know, you keep doing that, keep doing that. It plays with the offense's head. And then they hesitate when they make passes instead of making good, crisp, quick passes. Going for the lob that time, didn't get it. They double forts him immediately. That leaves Burton open. Yeah, Burton's got to hit that shot. He hit his first two. He hadn't hit one since. Brandon on the offensive rebound. Trying an interior pass off the hardwood that time, but it was stolen away. Yeah, too tough to handle in there. Should have gone right up with it. Fortson was in good position to follow his shot. 
Henderson could not free himself. Garner is open. Now spots for the three. That's what they needed to have, John. They needed to have him help out offensively. Right. He comes down the floor. He's got that shot every time. I think he likes to get a pass back to him. So some guys like to shoot off the pass, some off the dribble. Looks like he likes to shoot off the pass. Six points now for Chris Garner. Nine-point lead for the Tigers. Their largest of the game and largest by either team. You got to go to Fortson. Well, they're going to settle for the three on the outside. It's short off the iron. Ball is loose. Guess who's got it? Just for quickness, the lead pass. Not a bio. The alley-oop. Oh, he slipped on a wet spot. Henderson did. They're going to have to have some of the uh, ball boys and small girls uh, come out and maybe uh, clean that floor up a little bit. That could have been tragic. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the break. Boy, Memphis really confident, pushing the ball up the floor. Out of bio, he goes up. You know, a lot of times in the paint area, of course, you're getting a lot of sweat from guys in there, and the, and the paint areas tend to be even more slick than the normal floor because of the paint. So it can be dangerous down in there. you got to keep that dry. Well, that cost Memphis an easy two points. Four for four, three-point shooting here in the second half now by Memphis. Burton, the 0 for 5 this half. You know, you just can't about, find the range. He's got the shots. They're open shots, and they're his shots. You talked about quickness of hands here. I mean, the ball's being deflected on almost every time teams come down. And of course, Memphis is going to pack it back in on Danny Fortson until Cincinnati can prove they can shoot from outside. In the lane. That one won't go, and it is Chad Allen who has another rebound. Bobby Huggins won a goaltending on that. It didn't have a chance to go in, but it did come off the board. Henderson missed. And it's Baker going the other way. Fortson! Nice and the finish. You know, he's a big fella who can really get out and run the oh, floor, too, guys. He, and he's got three or four assists this half, too. He, he's a all-around uh, player. No doubt about it. Now in double figures with 11 points. And a huge box. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Allen, give it off. Allen underneath. It's Allen to Allen. Six points for Chad Allen. Well, Cincinnati's defense is what's breaking down here. Not Garner chasing on the perimeter. Now they give it to Fortson outside, and Fortson drops it down into two inside the three-point line. You know, he takes a lot of shots with his foot right on the line. He's only got one three-point attempt all year. All you have to do is back up a pitch or two, and he had a three. You think maybe it's a psychological yeah, thing where probably. he just thinks I'm out too far, I'm out of my range? Have, there's a lot of psychological. I mean, you guys wear the same socks, same sweatbands all year. You can guarantee where they shoot from is going to be psychological. Here's Allen popping out baseline. They look for Adebayo down low. He spins around one man. Off balance, one shot. He gets it and tips it back in. They had him caged up. Let him go base. No way you should do that. In fact, the defensive player should even put his foot almost out of bounds when he's guarding the guy to not let him. Bearcats need a run to, to stay in this ballgame. They have not made a run this half. Oh, and this building is loud now. It's been loud all afternoon, but it just went up a couple more decibels. Yeah, they're just staying down 9-7, 9-6, and they need to make a run. First shot won't fall. Rebound, Chad Allen. 0 for 6 this half from 3. A light court pass. Oh, Adebayo made the cardinal mistake, John. He caught it with one hand. He should have caught it with two and put it up and in. He was also dunking before he got the ball in his hand. Uh, Two-point games, but they just know how to win them. This is the difference right now. Second chance points here in the second half. By the way, fans, for uh, any audio difficulties you might be experiencing, our technicians are working on it. We'll have it corrected for you momentarily. Thank you for bearing with us. Memphis still in the zone. Two, three zone. Not very aggressive out of it. And uh, Cincinnati unable to get the ball of that guy cleanly. Fortson, and he throws it away. As the Burton finally hits one, yeah, they're making him off the schneid. You know what I mean? Yep. I was going to say, as the uh, buzzer was going off, that one trickled through the uh, twine.
counting down to the six minute mark. You know, shooters like that, they look for anything in order to get him off the schneid. He's missed six threes in a row. That may help. Usually you look at the free throw line, maybe. Richards broke free in underneath. Harry Allen spotted him, delivered the ball, and then he was hammered. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports Boxing from Paris, Pants, WBC World Lightweight Championship Plus Wide World Classic segment featuring Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hitman Hearns in the 81 World Welterweight Championship bout. Also an interview with Sugar Ray as he gets ready to return to the ring tonight against Hector Macho Camacho. <laughs> He's a grandpa. He's <laughs> yeah. he boxing, man. <laughs> Richards at the free throw line. He had a couple in the first half. He's only a 45% free throw shooter, so the stats uh -huh. catch him. Yeah. 0 for 2 that time. Cincinnati needs to score here. That, that gives him an opening. Yeah, I believe it was Richards and Fortson tangled up together underneath, and it's going to be a holding foul on Richards. 14 fouls on Memphis, only three on Cincinnati. 554 to go neither team really close to the bonus so they can both play very very aggressive defense and if they're going to draw fouls want to do that in a non shooting situation Richards first personal foul inbounds play Burton triggers it now it's Flint who will set it up high in between the circles they go for the alley -oop. stolen away by Richards they tried the back door that time with Patterson yeah, that wasn't even close that was the back door for the lob I thought that was a good time for them to start on a run. Well, they had the man wide open down low. Bradford, the pass was too high that time by Allen. And it went out of bounds. Cincinnati now looks like with uh, three guards in the ballgame. They want to try, yeah. to try a different look with Baker, Flint, and Burton in the ballgame. Uh, along with Danny Fortson and Martin. So that's the first time he's gone to three guards. Well, he's trying to change up anything. Bob Huggins is looking for somebody to hit from the outside because they have not been going in. And a bio with another rebound. So Memphis with three trips down the floor without a basket, trying to let Cincinnati closer. And Cincinnati does not take advantage. Sunday out of bio now has eight rebounds go with his double figures in points. Allen behind the back dribble, give it off down low. And a mile was stripped that time. Whistle, foul. And some pushing and shoving. And a lot of talking. Yep. Posturing. There's the nice feed by Allen. About couldn't quite get his hands on it. Little, little love push here. <laughs> Just a little bit. And then he, you know, I'm going to tell you, you can't do that. Three fouls now on Martin. And those, Sunday Adebayo with the line. Those two guys tangle, and at uh, midcourt, I'm too close. <laughs> <laughs> Memphis has given Cincinnati an opening here. They haven't converted the last three times down. Adebayo missing free throws. And, of course, a few minutes ago, Richards missed a couple. So Cincinnati really not taking advantage of that. And... Bobby right back to two guard, three big guy offense. 15 points now, Sunday out of bio. Didn't give that much time to work, did he? No. Out of bio with 15 points and eight rebounds. He's had a terrific afternoon. Again, they look for the outside shot. Damon Flint pulls the trigger and short off the iron. Rebound battle for controlled by Allen. He outfought Fortson to that basketball. Then he really didn't go after it very aggressively. If Memphis doesn't convert here, if I'm Bobby Huggins, I call a timeout. Yeah. Right? Whistle away from the ball. We got a hold. I think I think it's against Patterson when he was chasing Henderson. Yeah. He had his jersey. You've been known to do that in your play. No, 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 no. Not a bad foul. Not a good one. But, you know, you're, you're still not putting somebody on the line yet. You want to get aggressive. Cincinnati needs a turnover. They need some momentum. So you need to try to get after it and get that any way you can before Memphis gets in the bonus. A couple of people go down, but they still get the ball inbounded. Tied up, ball loose, Allen gets it back. Right to the basket, rejected the follow-up shot. Good by Richard. Now you see what happens when you go to the basket. You draw a lot of defensive players. That gives your teammates angles to the basket. Fortson, traffic, lost it. And then 
they reach in foul. Six left to play between Memphis and Cincinnati. It is a 10-point advantage for the Tigers. That foul was on Garner. Memphis' largest lead at 10. Largest lead by Cincinnati in the game was six. Again, they double and triple Danny Fortson. Will it be offensive or not? No. Does the Fortson basket count? Yes, it does. And an opportunity for the three-point play. That's Cincinnati style, definitely. Fortune, see, he gets the ball. Really doesn't. A little Hollywood there. It's a little Hollywood. He, By Richards. That's right. And as soon as he got his space there, Fortune went right up. Fortune did not jump into him. He just kind of cleared the space a little bit. Opportunity to complete the three-point play. And now 16 points for Danny Fordson of ABC Sports. Welcome back, everybody. The Pyramid, Memphis, Tennessee. And right now, the Tigers enjoying a 63-56 advantage over the highly rated Cincinnati Bearcats. Cincinnati's had a couple of chances in the last three or four minutes to really get back into this one. Memphis not uh, converting, but just haven't converted themselves. Danny Fortson just on a three-point play puts the deficit at seven, and Cincinnati's in some pressure. And they break the backcourt pressure. Two timeouts remaining for both teams. Those are both pulls. Both have a 20 left. Cincinnati in the bonus on the next foul. Memphis has got to wait for two. That could be critical down at the end if Cincinnati can get close. Garner could not get the shot off. Down to five on the clock, and the foul is going to be out high Boy, against that's, Patterson. That's a real <laughs> iffy call. You didn't like the, that one, huh? All the bumping we've been seeing this game. You know, the one thing I think, it, again, players don't want to see is, uh, you know, a change in posture by the guys blowing a whistle. Let's take a look at it. And of course, those of you who've been with us the whole game, this has been a banging and a bruiser. Um, you know, a little, little touch foul. I don't know. And timeout is control in the second half as far as taking care of the glass jump. You know, first half, Cincinnati was uh, three more rebounds. Memphis had 11 offensive rebounds, only five defensive rebounds in the first half. It's really dominating the boards. Well, tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern Time on ABC, Toyota presents the Grand Prix of Miami. Drivers to watch, of course, defending champion Jimmy Vassar. Also, Michael Andretti had the most wins among active drivers. That's tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern on ABC Sports. 1996 Cart Rookie of the Year, Greg Moore. Car owned by a friend of mine. Uh-oh. The Forsyth family. Be anxious to see that one. I know you'll be locked I in. I love a racing, man. I love that You'll racing. be locked in. I get to as many as I can. Gary Allen at the free throw line. And it won't go. Yep. They, they say it's going to count. That Martin ripped it off the iron while it was still hanging there. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple uh, freshman mistakes. That was a third. But, you know, as a coach, you want to see aggressive mistakes like this, not passive ones. Let's take a look at it. You got the whistle. You blow it. Uh, it was going in. Good call. Bob Huggins just looked over at our area and asked if it really did happen, and we indicated that it did, that it was on the cylinder. And it was going in, too. Yeah, it was. Of yeah. course, we got slow-mo. <laughs> Cincinnati needs a hoop here bad. Very bad. Damon Flint. And they got Fortson away from the ball, or is it a three-second lane violation? It is a three-second lane violation on Fortson. And again, the Bearcats with backcourt pressure. Henderson ahead to Allen. Memphis breaks it easily, and now Garner will set it up. Now, one of the things Memphis has got to be careful is that they don't get too passive here in the last three minutes. 
Now, you know, an eight-point lead's a pretty good lead, but Cincinnati can rattle them up real fast with the three shoot three-point shooters they got in Fortson. So you got to keep attacking, keep playing the way you've been playing. Down to six. Garner in trouble. Has to get it back outside to Allen. This is just what you were talking about, John. The off-balance shot. I think he got bailed out on the foul. He did. That's tough. You run the clock all the way down. You play good defense, and then you get a tic-tac foul in the back. Yeah, it really wasn't uh, well set up that time by Memphis, but they got bailed out with a foul. Well, we talked about this earlier, about what this means to Memphis and ho head coach Larry Finch. It puts them in position to be right at the top in their division in Conference USA. Right, absolutely. You got... Uh, a game tomorrow, you see Charlotte at uh, Southern Miss. It plays a big role. If Charlotte loses, Memphis wins here. They win the division. They get a bye in the tournament. And, you know, they've had some pretty big wins this year at Michigan, Marquette, at Louisville, Louisville here, at Tulane, and in this one, uh, maybe a second look if they go maybe to the championship game of that tournament. Second one did not fall. And Cincinnati quickly the other way. Damon Flint, penetrating move. Head and shoulder pump fake, puts it up, and he draws contact, he'll go to the line. Thinking as a coach now, the one thing you want to tell your players if you're Memphis is try to keep Cincinnati from scoring from the free throw line when the clock is stopped. That's important. Foul was on Chad Allen, that is his third. And he has been an important factor defensively for Memphis in this game. What I meant by that is if you score a field goal, you got to understand that clock keeps running, okay? And you're going to run six, seven seconds off before you get the ball inbounds. Here, you score two from the line, the clock doesn't run. It's dead until you get the ball inbounds. Again, they try to trap along the sideline, but it is Memphis that breaks the trap. Welcome everybody who have been watching UMass Temple. Jim Brinson along with John Mendel, Payne Weber, college basketball here on ABC. We're at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, where right now Memphis, with a minute 53 remaining, is attempting to upset highly ranked Cincinnati. They lead it 65 to 58. Memphis has done an excellent job handling Cincinnati's pressure defense. Having very few turnovers here in the second half and have converted a lot of uh, easy shots and control the boards against a team who's number two in the country in rebounding. Sunday out of bio, drops down the first offering. By the way, next week premieres of three outstanding new series on ABC. First on Monday, Spies Who... Sunday out of bio, performing today on a Saturday. Senior day here at Memphis. And of course, as we've mentioned before, Larry Finch's last regular season game here in the Pyramid. It's a good move too in the easy. interior, yeah. Too and easy in the foul. In. Yeah. Boy, you just can't let him get set, set up like that, John. He's got 18 points now. Well, again, and the last thing you want to do is foul him because, again, the clock stops. You give him a chance for a three-point play. You get him, you're get you out of position here. He's got you beat, so you want to let him go. Well, while we were showing the replay, Bob Huggins, the head coach at Cincinnati, just got teed up. Not good. Larry Finch, the coach of Memphis, got a technical foul in the first half. Now it's Bob Huggins of Cincinnati here in the second. Now, not good timing either because that'll give Memphis a chance to make up a point here with a minute 45 to go. All, all those points are important. Six of seven at the free throw line for Danny Fortson. Now seven of eight and 19 points. He comes into today's game averaging a little better than 21 points a game. Yeah, Danny struggled in the first half. He only had four points. Got in foul trouble with about 11 minutes to go in the first half, and Bob Huggins took him out of the game and left him out. Now we go to the other end for the technical foul shot by Henderson. Two of them, it's a bench uh, technical. You know, one of the things, when you're in practice or when you're in a game, most of the time there's guys around the free throw line when you're shooting. It's tough to shoot these technical free throws with nobody there. Uh -huh. All the all the background is different, and, and it's really different. But sometimes in technicals, when coaches tell me, go shoot, I didn't want to shoot them. You backed off? That's the, yeah. first, that's the first time you've yeah. ever admitted you ever backed off from a shot. I want to keep my percentage up. <laughs> I know you were a numbers kind of guy. 
All right, big transition here for Memphis. They can put themselves in serious control with this one. Well, they want to hold the ball and eat some clock if they can. They still have 20 seconds to run off on the shot clock. Well, Cincinnati hopefully is not going to foul now or wait till they end the foul. They should have fouled early if they're going to foul. Henderson, open, give it off down low, and that one did not go. Got to push it up now. Cincinnati really have struggled, have not converted on a three-point shot. Blitt gave it up. Sunday out of bounds. 19 points for Sunday. Baker spots for three. No, oh, he's a little bit in front. A little bit in yep, front. They're going to give him the two. He's going to get you every time. Four, four-point turnaround. Cincinnati now time to set up their press. Momentary stoppage of play right now as we had some uh, bumping between Martin and Adebayo. Now Fortson back in. They couldn't make the substitution. They had to start, John, with the players that left during the 20-second timeout. Here's the pressure. And just like that, trying to draw the charge was Fortson, and he couldn't do it. Like It'll a be a blocking foul. Cross-body block <laughs> there by Fortson. <laughs> That's his third personal. 6'7", 260. Of course, that's what you want to do if you're Cincinnati. You're, you're down seven points. You want to be very aggressive on the inbounds pass. Try to get the steal, of course, but if not, put uh, Memphis on the free throw line, stop the clock, and uh, hopefully challenge their free throw percentage, which on the year is 63%. All right, so Harry Allen goes to the line. He has 11 points in today's game, but he is a meager two of six at the line. Now make it three of seven. You know, Harry Allen, though, is an 86% free throw shooter in the last four minutes of a ball game. So it, when you look at the stats, you want to look at that one, too. You don't want to put him on the line. 72-63, under a minute to play. Memphis out in front of Cincinnati. Pulling the upset here as that shot will not go by Baker and Chad Allen has himself another rebound. Henderson. This one's history. He's going to pull up and shoot it and it won't go. Tried to tip it yeah, in. You just need a, to shoot it, John. No, you just need to hang on to the ball. Adebayo picks up the loose ball and scores and draws the foul. And the seniors are going to win this one on their last day. They're celebrating now. to celebrate. Loose ball down low, and there is Sunday in the right spot to score it on a Saturday. Opportunity for the three-point play. Five sixty-three with 37 seconds remaining. Damon Flint will let the three ball go. It will not drop for him, and Memphis is going to win this game. The final one for head coach of Memphis, Larry Finch, here at the Pyramid. They still have the Conference USA Tournament. And, John, if they play at a high-caliber pace like this, they could be in postseason play. Definitely talked about the six wins. Six big wins. They could have a chance to get a second look from the NCAA Tournament Committee. They will hold it for the final sound of the horn. Allen shoots it, and that's it. 75-63. Memphis wins over Cincinnati. Bob Huggins with an embrace for Larry Finch. Close friends and a very difficult situation for Larry Finch. Has to resign at the end, or in the middle of the year, and this being his last game at the Pyramid, the home court of the Memphis Tigers. And the seniors will celebrate also as they will head to Conference USA Tournament on a very high note. 75-63 Memphis wins over Cincinnati. We'll be right back.